All right. Hello, YouTube. This is going to be a short video uh, talking about AR-15 barrels and accuracy and one of the ways to improve a stock barrel that you have. And essentially, basically what we're going to be doing is um, talking about how to improve the fitment of the barrel into the upper receiver so that it's nice and tight and it's it's not um, loose. And that has been shown to improve accuracy uh, with most uh, rifles. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, show you the barrel here. This is a Keystone Accuracy service rifle barrel. Focus. There we go. And uh, it's 20 inches, stainless steel, heavy barrel. It's a one in seven twist. And it's primarily set up for service rifle shooting. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put this phone in the tripod here, and I'm gonna zoom in. All right. There we go. And uh, one of the most important things to accuracy is the relationship between this barrel extension and the upper receiver. These things, these two things fit together. It's basically a sleeve that sort of slides in there, and uh, as you can see, it, it's 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 in there, but it's not it's not an interference fit. Here we wiggle it around. So you know that's a potential area for inaccuracy problems. So with a AR upper, what you can do um, is improve that. You can uh, use a different barrel extension that has um, a little bit larger diameter. This is a, a bat barrel extension. These are made by Bat Machine, and you buy them like this. And you can try them, you can get them oversized, and then try them and see how they fit into a into an upper. Right, so that one, that one is actually in there pretty good. I think this is a one thousandth oversized upper uh, barrel extension from a bat. Let's see if I can get it out. So that fits in there pretty good. So you can you can get these and try them out, and then send the barrel extension to your gunsmith, and then have them uh, chamber your barrel with that particular barrel extension, and that's going to improve the the fit. the uh, The other thing you can do is if you already have a rifle, so or if you have a barrel. Right, buy a couple of these at a time, um, and try it out. You realize, eh, I mean, it's in there, but it's it's not a great fit. I want to improve that. Uh, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, I I have heard people have used Loctite in here, but I don't think that's a particularly great method. Some people have used bedding compound. Um, but the best method that I found is to use some uh, stainless steel shim stock. Now, stainless steel shim stock is used uh, by machinists. You get, you get an old box like that. It's a lifetime supply. And it's just a it's just a roll of shim stock. This is one thousandths uh, thickness. You get them in different thickness. And you gotta be very careful with that stuff because it is incredibly sharp. And you can, I sliced my, my thumb <laughs> just uh, getting ready for this video. But basically you use a, a pair of scissors to cut out a section. And uh, this is this is the stainless steel shim stock. It's just like a wafer thin, right? And what you can do is you use this stuff, basically you take it and you wrap it around the barrel extension like that, and then you slide the upper receiver on there. All right, and what that does is it just basically takes up the gap. Now, the length of this piece of shim stock really depends upon how you f how this thing fits. If it's a real loosey goose system, you might need a longer piece. Uh, you might, you know, I don't know how, if it's really out of whack, you, you might, if it's a home build or something, you might have to do a, a full wrap. This is, uh, typically I use about three quarters of a wrap. 
and then I, I try and cut it so it, it would fit properly uh, in between the, the end of the barrel extension and the, the index pin. So basically you hold it on there like that and get the upper receiver started on there. And you got to hold on to that chimp stock. You can't get a hold tension on it. You just very slowly, gingerly fit that on there. And a little back and forth helps. And once you once you get it going, you can you can let it go, but until you get it right up to the index pin, you wanna kinda hold on to it. And you just work it back and forth. Sometimes you gotta go slow. Now this this particular piece of shim stock, this is going on pretty easy. This is not bad, but if I was going to really build this rifle today, I would probably cut a larger piece of shim stock because you want a really tight fit in there. So this is this is pretty good. We're down to the index pin. Now I'm going to zoom in here. You can really see what's going on. Sorry for that's my sump pump. In the basement going but you can really see how that is fitting on there good and I'm just gonna keep going and eventually you get to the point here you just have to push it straight because the index pin get a little maybe a couple thousand left and right oh boy that's on that that's on that pretty good and that's what you want you, you just want it to you want it so you can't muscle it on. And then, then what you do is just uh, take a little t a piece of wood and a hammer. Just a piece of wood uh, act as a hammer. There's my piece of wood. You sort of beat it on there. All right? And you can see... I'm, cr I'm cranking on it pretty good. Actually, that that would pro this would be fine for building. That thing is on there. That thing is on there tight. That is not gonna move. Now, that that will improve your accuracy. Uh, the the system as it's designed is 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 plenty accurate for for government work. I mean, it's a it's a great system. I, I did put a, a barrel nut on here. With the with the with the way it's designed, though, there is a couple of issues. One is is the receiver face straight? Now, if you get a good upper receiver from somebody like Aero Precision or or, or Mega Arms or somebody, the, these invariably are pretty darn good. I, I haven't had a lot of issues with most of the receivers I've I've bought, but they do sell these facing tools where you can. Put a mandrel in there and put some lapping compound and, and spin it around. Um, I haven't found a real need for that. If you, if you do have something that's out of whack, basically what that does is it, it, it the whole barrel is out of whack in some direction. And uh, it can sort of screw up your zeros. So if you have a scope on there and you want your uh, reticle sort of centered up and not have to use a lot of windage in order to get it zeroed, um, that would be a good use of one of those tools. Some people put these on a, on a, uh, in between centers, they, they, they have a um, lathe and then they will face this front of the receiver and that will, that will clean it up. But, uh, this, the system itself is, is, is pretty good, but you're still relying on these sort of thin threads. And then that, that back face that, you know, uh, this face here, to to clamp this long barrel on, right? Um, there's a lot of gravity pulling down on that barrel, and it's this one in particular is 20 inches. So when you when you fire it, you know it it, it does a, a, a noodle, right? There's uh, harmonics going on um, all the way from the firing pin moving forward, and, it, it, and then the recoil itself. So having this thing put in there, nice and tight. Um, Helps to have uh, more consistent vibrations, and you see this is the way the the barrel nut fits on there. Sort of screws down there like that. Um, 
right? And then you're relying on that clamping force um, to hold everything together. So uh, the system as designed is actually pretty good, but um, when you have slop in the barrel extension fit, um, and, and again, you can get a you can get a rifle that has a sloppy barrel extension fit, and it'll still shoot good. It'll shoot in an angle or less. Um, we're not really talking about um, huge improvements here. We're talking about um, minor improvements. But, uh, but this is a good one, and it's cheap, and Shimstock is, is, is pretty inexpensive. So that was, that was one of the things I wanted to, to show, how, how tight that thing is on there. I mean, and if I used some more Shimstock, I really would have had to hit that thing with a hammer to get it on there. But that's actually, that's actually pretty good. And I, 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 I can barely move it with all my weight. All right, there we go. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how to take this thing off. But that's, that's the level of how tight you want it. You don't want it on there. So tight you can't get it off. But to use a persuader like this is, is just fine. And uh, the nice thing about this is this shim stock is cheap. And uh, I'm going to reuse this piece. I actually build this rifle because it's the right length. Ah, it, it, it's still in there. <laughs> okay, it stayed in the barrel. Yeah, so, or stayed in the uh, upper receiver, I should say. But uh, there you go. There it is, and you can reuse that. Apparently, that's the, the right length. So that's a. Uh, that's the primary reason that people bed these things. Um, they're not really bedding them to improve axial alignment with everything. <laughs> and uh, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you I'm gonna show you how this system locks up. Right, we've got a got a uh, barrel extension here. Actually, I'm gonna I gotta zoom out here. I got a barrel extension. And the you know the bolt fits in there and it cams over and it, it locks it in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Anyways, but I, I have um I have a, a complete bolt carrier here. And what I wanted to do was to show you how these things lock up. And The thing that people leave out of, of this equation is uh, the cartridge, right? They don't, they're not thinking about the cartridge. But uh, this here is a, this is a JP bolt. This is a brand new bolt, and it's been headspaced for this particular gun. So it's it's got a nice tight headspace. Although uh, Keystone did not, I did not send him the bolt to headspace this, but I did check it with a headspace cage. So uh, it normally, yeah, zoom in here a little bit. You know, normally this this well, let's let's get oriented the right way. Normally this would go in here and sort of cam over that way and and lock up, right? That's that's the relationship. See see how loose that is. It's pretty loose. It's not it's not super tight. It's kind of loose. Right? See that? Sort of a loosey goosey arrangement. But what people aren't paying attention to is the ejector. Right? You get an ejector here on this rifle. And that fucking spring, that is a one inch, I think it's a one inch spring, and that thing is tight. Right? There's a lot of spring pressure exerted by that that little ejector. And um, when this thing locks up, it, it actually locks up tight. So you don't need to worry about aligning anything. So this is a this is a cartridge case. It's a Lake City 11. It's been sized. So when you, when you put that thing in there, right, and you, you get to push it in, and then it cams over. And that's what it would look like inside the gun. Right? That, that fucking thing is in there tight. You can see i got to use some force to... Get the lock up. There's, you know, there's a little bit of movement, but 
not much. That spring in the ejector, it pushes the whole bolt assembly backwards against the locking lugs when it when it's locked up. It's it's fucking locked up tight. Right? So some people will say, well, geez, uh, what about when it's in the bolt carrier? You know, that, that can't be right. So what I have here is an aim bolt. This is the one I'm using in the service rifle I'm building. So I will I will put this together and then I'm gonna lock it into the barrel extension. And we'll take a look at how that fits together. So that's a completed bolt. Now if you look at this, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's see. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of play. So you know, out would be uh, when it's ejected in is when it's in battery. So when it's in battery, you hear that? There's all kinds of tolerances in there. And then radially, okay, basically what we're talking about is the gas rings. It's the, it's the gas rings that we're, that we're talking about. That are, are holding the, the ass end of the, the bolt into the carrier. And that wobble is because of the gas rings. If it was solid, it, you know, it probably wouldn't have something like that, but it would wear. So uh what I'll do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in there and then you know see if I can if there's really no way to do this. I need to use a screwdriver earlier when I tried this. Okay, there we go. All right, so that's that's locked up. Okay, so when the bolt's forward, or the carry is all the way forward, um, there's all kinds of slop in there. Right, watch this. I'm gonna zoom out. You, 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 you're not improving any kind of alignment by doing anything bedding in here. All the alignment is done in the chambering job and the fitting of the barrel extension. And then conversely, when the bolt locks up into the barrel extension. But I mean, that, that, there's all kinds of movement there. Up, down, left, right. And that's because of the ejector in the case. Right. So if anybody has uh, questions about this, uh, this is not my idea. I think this has been done by gunsmiths who are in the know for quite some time. <laughs> I did serve with uh, Joe Carlos, who is uh, one of the gunsmiths or armor team armor for the United States Army Reserve Rifle Team, and uh, he was the one who's been talking about this a lot. There's some YouTube videos, and then he also published several uh, articles on American gunsmith talking about the relationship between barrel extensions. And accuracy and he had a fleet of about 130 rifles that he had to improve he didn't have a huge budget budget and what he realized was that this relationship is important to accuracy the relationship between the barrel extension and the upper receiver and he came up with this shim stock method it's a lot cleaner than actually having to use something some kind of a bedding compound now i i have in the past used also a piece here i have used some green loctite some wicking Loctite. Once I get everything assembled, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll come on the inside here and put some green Loctite in there just to uh, make sure it uh, is really secure. But I don't think that's actually necessary. But uh, anyways, uh, Joe was the one that uh, has been popularizing this particular method for the last several years. 
And if you want to read about that, just uh, you can buy old copies, PDFs uh, from American Gunsmith magazine, and you can read about it. And he's he's probably got about a half dozen articles uh, talking about this specifically. And then uh, Joe is also a gunsmith and uh, makes service rifles for CMP High Power and um, NRA High Power. And uh, I have a couple of his rifles, and they shoot phenomenally well. So. Anyways, if you have questions or comments, please uh, leave them below. And um, I'm not going to tell you to like and subscribe because I don't care. <laughs> I'm just passing on some information. And uh, I, I hope this is useful uh, to you. And uh, maybe it'll uh, generate some interesting conversations as well. All right. Thanks a lot. See ya.